Hi everyone, we're going to look at how to do explicit to recursive sequences for arithmetic type sequences now. So given an explicit formula, can we take that and figure out a recursive formula based on that explicit formula? What I would do every time is look at this sequence, look at how the sequence is changing, and that will help you figure out how to do the recursive formula. Because all recursive formats are all about, are all of this form, where you want to take, you want to figure out the next term given the current term, and then plus something. It could be a negative there. Um, and then starting somewhere. That's what a recursive format looks like. Tell me where to start and then tell me how to get to the next term given the one that I'm currently at. That's how we do recursive writing. So if we had a list of, of the, the actual uh, sequence out, that would help us look at the changes. Or we could look at the formula and you can get the changes out of there. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to stick to using a table because I think that makes the most sense. So both of these formulas are equivalent. This is the one you typically would see for y equals mx plus b since arithmetic sequences are linear relationships. Um, this is the one on the left here where we see on the reference sheet. You see the formula a n equals a1 plus n minus 1 times d. Um, just the d is in front instead of behind it. It's the same idea. Typically, the one on the right is easier to work with because that's what we're used to. Y equals mx plus b, linear relationships. We've seen a lot of in algebra. So we're usually better at this formula. So I'm going to stick with this one. This, of course, is equivalent. If you were to multiply this in, you would get the exact same formula once you combine like terms. So let's make a little table out of these um, values here. So let's do n and a of n. Make a little table. So Typically for a sequence, there is no zeroth value. Some sequences are defined where the first one is called um, A0, but typically we're going to start with the first term, then the second, then the third, then the fourth. Again, that could be different depending on the, the situation we're talking about, but for most sequences, it typically starts with the first one. So A of 1 would be 4 times 1 plus 16, which would be 20. Um, if we were to find the y-intercept, we already know what it is. It's 16, which would be here. But again, we're assuming that the first term is going to be 20 because you don't typically have a zero term. So then from there, we're going to do a of 2, which would be 4 times 2 plus 16, which is 8 plus 16, which is 24. And you can already see what the change is going to be, which should make sense. We know this is linear, so we're adding 4, which is the slope. Since n is increasing by 1, a of n is just increased by 4, because again, that's our slope. So we know this would be 28 and 32. So for our recursive format, we want to say start at the first term, and then increase by this plus 4. And it really isn't too bad to write that recursively. So think about it first using next now. So the next term would be the current one plus 4, because we're changing by plus 4 every time. And then we're going to start at 20. That's how we make this sequence. Start at 20 and increase by 4 every time. Now the different notation to use for this, it's got a of n, so let's try and use that. So the next term we could start at, it depends on where we start. If you want to call the first, or where we are right now, a of n, the next term would be one more than that. a of n plus 1 would be the one after that. If this is a of 4, this would be a of 5. We could do it like that, and then just say plus 4. And then a of 1, the first term is 20. So this first sequence, first part of the sequence here, this would be for when n is greater than or equal to 1. Because that would be, say you wanted to find a2, that would be when n equals 1. That would define your sequence recursively like that. Of course, we could write it differently. You could say, well, what if I want to call the first or the next term a of n? The one before it would be a of n minus 1. It means it's the exact same thing. Still, we would start at the first term of 20, but we would just change this definition here. n wouldn't start at 1. It would start at 2. So this would be n is greater than 1 or n is greater than or equal to 2 because you couldn't do a of 1 equals a of 0 plus 4. Based on how we define this function, there is no, or this sequence, there is no 0 term. So that wouldn't work. So we have to do greater than 1 if we're going to write like this. Either way we write this recursive formula is representing the exact same thing. So either way is correct. For down below, it's very similar. I just got f of x notation instead. Again, we're going to stick with this one that we're used to. Make a little table out of this. 
So x and f of x here. So when x is 1, our first term, this would be 6 times 1 plus 1, which is 7. When x is 2, it would be 6 times 2 plus 1, which is 13. And you can see what the change is. Plus 6, which again, we know it's plus 6 because the slope was 6. So 3 would be 19. Again, there's the plus 6. So for our recursive format, we want to say the same thing as before, same kind of structure here. So the next is the now plus something starting at something. So we're going to start at 7 and we're going to add 6 each time. So I wanted to say a recursive uh, relationship that says that same thing. And we're just going to use f of x notation. So the next term, f of x plus 1, would be the current term plus 6. And then the first term, f of 1, is 7. That's how we would define this recursively. And then this first part here would be for when x is greater than or equal to 1. Or we could write it a little differently. You could say f of x equals f of x minus 1. Or plus 6 when x is greater than 1. And again, f of 1 would equal the first term, 7. Both of those say the same thing because the next term is the current term, the term before it, the now, plus 6, starting at the first value, which is 7. And that's how we take an explicit formula, produce a table, and then use that table to make a recursive formula for a sequence.